Uh, in 2012, Peter Beinart released his brilliant book, The Crisis of Zionism, where he endorsed the boycott of the settlements. Uh, Beinart took to the stage two times in the months following the book's publication to debate Alan Dershowitz, who did not support a boycott of the settlements. So you had Beinart, who supported a boycott, against Dershowitz, who did not support a boycott. So both Dershowitz and Beinart were Zionists who supported two states. Dershowitz is a liberal Zionist. Beinart was a leftist Zionist. Yes, it exists. And both supported two states for two people, roughly in line with UN Resolution 242. The Beinart-Dershowitz debates demonstrate that support for two states does not require support for a settlement boycott. If you oppose the settlement boycotts, it does not make you an annexationist, though it's true that annexationists, those people who want to annex the West Bank to Israel or Area C, the greater Israel folks, those people also oppose the boycott. So you can absolutely support the creation of a Palestinian state and oppose the boycott of the settlements, which I do. And let me say that even though I oppose it, a settlement boycott or advocacy for a settlement boycott is not an act of anti-Semitism. A boycott of Israeli settlements is a valid form of protest against an Israeli policy. And even according to Hasbara, criticism of Israel's policies is legitimate. So you have who to rely on. Now, in Israel, there was an overreaction to the settlement boycott. President Isaac Herzog, not usually known as a right-wing ideologue, labeled the boycott anti-Semitic. Do I agree with President Herzog? No, but let's try to figure out where he's coming from. All human beings, Zionists included, filter the present through the prism of the past. Okay, we understand our present through the past. On the left, the association with boycotts is South Africa. The association of boycotts is positive. Boycotts are the instrument by which apartheid was dismantled and equal rights came to be. Putting aside that that's not actually true, that is the association. Memory is more important than history. So for the left, the legacy of boycotts is South Africa and social justice. For Jews, the association with boycotts is quite a bit more dire. In Jewish memory, boycotts are associated with Nazi Germany. The association of boycotts is negative. Boycotts are the, are the instrument through which Jewish life was disrupted and eventually liquidated on the European continent. For many Jews, especially Israelis, for many Jews, especially those over 45, the legacy of boycotts is the swastika and injustice. And a quick aside, if anti-Zionists, especially Jewish anti-Zionists, were, were sympathetic, and if their anti-Zionism was based on love, they would seek to uncover the human values in the human era of President Herzog. I have a Kabbalistic aside. I'm going to leave it out for now. What about me? So at first, I quietly supported the boycott. I didn't post on Twitter nor on Facebook, but I'm always looking for an excuse to get a pint of Ben and Jerry's. So I snuck out to my local bodega and I bought myself a pint of their s'mores ice cream, which was excellent. Um, again, the boycott settlement and the settlement's only position is an honorable position. And it's really sad that Peter Beinart gave up his support of a settlement-only boycott when he transformed into an anti-Zionist in June of 2020. And since Beinart gave up his support of a settlement-only boycott, I cannot think of another intellectual writer of his stature, really of any stature, that supports a boycott of the settlements and the settlements only. And for this reason, I do not support the boycott. Settlement boycotts and only settlement boycotts are a fringe position. The way the political chips fall, most people either support a boycott of all of Israel or support a boycott of none of Israel. In fact, the CEO of Ben & Jerry's, I forget her name, I apologize, but she wanted a boycott of all of Israel. So it really seems that either you're pro-BDS or anti-BDS. Like baseball, nuance is an American tradition past its time. Very few people, and I really can't name any, support a boycott of the settlements and only the settlements. So what you have here is the real potential for a snowballing effect. A boycott of just the settlements can easily snowball into a boycott of all of Israel. There are very few people who rep the boycott position publicly. 
of boycott position of the settlements is a position voiced by zero intellectuals of stature. At the end of the day, there may be no choice between a boycott of some of Israel and a boycott of all of Israel. We may be faced with a very reductive choice, and unfortunately, this seems to be the rule in 2020's American in 2020 American politics. But we may be faced with a very reductive choice of no boycott or full boycott, and I know where I stand.